combined visual intelligence hmm it's difficult because the point is that now we are picking up one by one what Marek had combined so we are now each component analyzing so they yes, say now if you if you whip hard at least he will confess something so <laughs> now the component will will have to say something <laughs> when you no, because if you see this trial the sample size and all if you compare it with Merrick's first trial it, it is a very similar very found profound effect but this is at least a, but this is at least an rct yeah that, yes, that, yeah. that, 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 that that's the yeah, that's the observation that was a before and after study Merrick's trial hmm? the first one at least yeah But it is still very favorite for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of intensives. I mean, yeah, yeah. Today I'm using. No, a, in fact, uh, Subaradi, neurologists also like it because they say, say sometimes with unexplained part. encephalopathy, unexplained. they say you use diamine, it tends to improve, they say, with the carbohydrate I, loading, they push into encephalopathy. They say. Today, today, in an NCS is patient, I was 500 mg TDS, thiamine. Mm. Patient is but a it is. patient with stroke. Matlab, own stroke was having repeated seizures. So patient was shifted to my side. So as usual, Midas infusion and everything. But there was no scissors, but they detected the double spikes on the EEG. They said that, sir, we will continue with thiamine also alongside others. So I said, that's fine. Then I said, no, no, that, Bernie, Bernie can me, even otherwise, is not only in alcoholics, isn't it? Because any person who is thiamine deficient can have, isn't it? Even uh, the, or, you know, the. No, no, but you know, not deficient, mm -hmm. non deficient person. if. Yeah, yeah. You, you have not measured the thiamine levels. Yeah, but, but you know, Harrison, all the old Harrison used to say that, like, you know, you're all, it's not only as expected in, you know, alcoholic, even other person also can have an encephalopathy, you know? Because it is their thiamine division. Yeah. More or less. There is some starvation. We don't know what happened in the last 10 days, 15 days, you know? Yeah. We always use it. Maybe it's harmless, I believe. Anyway. Yeah. Hmm. Unlike others. Yeah, 12 people are scared of using in very high dose now. It is, yeah, I have not seen very good RCTs after that in our this journal ICM and CCM. Whatever is coming is coming in NEGM only. Mm -hmm. All the trials patch, this, that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so everything is set for uh, accordion, is it? This is a different place this time, is it, Anirubha? Yeah, yeah. This this is different because your accommodation is there, so it is always better to have it in the same venue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the World Cup, the, there has been a lot of bookings in those. Mm -hmm. All filled up. Mm. And NACO also happening at the same time. Eh? That, the defiant group, whatever. The, yeah, the Nakon people, you know, the rebel group, you know, they are having, they are also having the same. In, in Hyderabad? No, no, this is in Delhi, man. Delhi. Along with your record, you know, yeah. Uh, and uh, in Hyderabad also, it's. Hyderabad is a different one, yeah. I think that has happened in November. Okay. Uh, so That's this is in October, yeah. Thirteen, fourteen. that SNCC is there. Today I got a mail. So this is critical care. Uh, that's in October and November. Agra, huh? Is it October and November? October. Mm, okay. Just the next week, weekend after my. <laughs> October. Uh, Nidman, you can start off at 9 5. Is it 7 5 already? 5 or 7 3. Yeah, two more minutes. So. Yeah, I will start. Once two more minutes. Start, down, start. We'll start here. <clears throat> But participants are 19. Okay. 26 it is trying to. 26 including panelists. 6 million yeah. out of uh, participants. Even later also they can watch. It's in YouTube. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me start. <clears throat> Mina, you can start off the clock. Yes. Screen sharing. Sir.
unable to screen share sir you can you can share the screen now uh, ramesh yes good evening friends it is the fourth friday of the month and it's evening and it's time once again to get back to the jix rapid journal review today we have amongst us the presentation by dr ramesh from apollo health city hyderabad welcome you dr ramesh who will be moderated you, by our ever cheerful um, ever cheerful sir. dr k subba reddy also from apollo health city hyderabad welcome you dr subba reddy thank you and we have our regular panelists dr pradeep rangappa and dr ajit from bangalore welcome you all as panelists and thank we you, have thank you anirban and we have our participants who are waiting to hear so we all know that thiamine has a very key role in the aerobic metabolism and the kidney is a rich as a source or a rich center of mitochondria where either deficiency of thiamine can have an impact on the aerobic metabolism so kidney is also the site of disturbance during sepsis and this study which has been published in the american journal of respiratory and critical care throws a light on the effect of some of replacement of thiamine on septic shock so without wasting time we will move on to dr ramesh to present the trial yes thank you sir dr ramesh thank you sir uh, welcome you all good evening everyone welcome to rapid journal review uh, i am thanks to chief moderator moderator and panel members to give me the opportunity uh, today's journal we are discussing about terp trial uh, this is a time and uh, for renal protection in a septic shock patient uh, published in american journal of uh, respiratory and critical care medicine in september 2023 Uh, it is uh, done by us uh, uh, hospital done in us hospital from 2018 to 2023 22 in the background uh, kidney is the most organ uh, got affected during the septic uh, induced multi organ dysfunction and kidney septic kidney injury is the leading cause of mortality in the sepsis patients also uh, most of the research sir uh, aimed at to alternate the septic uh, kidney injury by restoring the renal perfusions but the recent articles are uh, suggesting that uh, septic kidney injury occurs without prolonged hypoperfusion of uh, kidney uh, in nephrol at point of care published uh, uh, published uh, to the, uh, published by lu et al in 2017 they, they are explaining the pathogenesis of septic kidney injuries in the septic kidney injuries they are suggesting that Uh, not the renal ischemia alone is causing the septic kidney injuries the, the others are uh, tubular damage by the cytokine and uh, reactant oxygen species result in necrosis and uh, apoptosis of tubulars uh, renal hyperemia and glomerular microthrombi by the uh, septic indu uh, induced dic are the other factors are also contributing to the septic kidney injuries uh, the, one of the uh, Uh, Arthur uh, mentioned the trial uh, Lagran et al. Uh, published in Critical Care uh, 2013. It was the monitoring of uh, assessment of uh, association between the hemodynamics parameters uh, and the septic kidney injuries. It shows that ATN uh, is very less number of uh, causes than uh, renal hyperemia. And one more uh, Arthur suggested that. Uh, uh, a publication in kosaka uh, critical care medicine 2016 uh, by kosaka et al it is a histopathology of acute kidney injury systemic review it includes 202 studies in 1000 animals the histopathology is showing uh, acute tubular necrosis and kidney apoptosis accounts for 20% each and the remaining patients mostly uh, remaining animals shows that uh, only the non specific changes in the kidneys the author took the other cause of uh, septic kidney injury apoptosis uh, by the mitochondrial dysfunction and they how to manage with the thiamine why uh, thiamine uh, they suggest, uh, suggested was thiamine is a essential micronutrient is a important cofactor for the enzyme of pyruvate dehydrogenase and transcarbolase pyruvate dehydrogenase is a key player in the aerobic uh, respiration essential for the cellular energy production and the uh, 
ஆக்சிஜன் ஃப்ரீ ரேடிக்கல்ஸ் பைர்வே டிஹைட்ரேஸ் ஹெல்ப்ஸ் இன் த கன்வர்ஷன் ஆஃப் பைர்வே டு த அஸ்டில் கோயில் Uh, if thiamine or pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency results in the uh, leads to the pathway of conversion of pyruvate to the lactate you end up in the anaerobic uh, metabolism uh, so the pyruvate dehydrogenase and transketol is very essential for the generation of uh, energy so for the cell and also the cellular antioxidants so uh, thiamine deficiency end up in bioenergetic failure and uh, formation of reactive oxygen free radicals lead to the apoptosis of the cells and uh, high concentration of uh, mitochondria in the kidney so they uh, authors want to check that uh, thiamine helps in the ki- septic kidney injury or not methods uh, this is a phase 2 uh, multicentric uh, randomized trial running in uh, uh, us by three hospital around the new york it's a thiamine versus placebo in the septic uh, evaluation in the septic pa- patients the evaluation of rise in serum creatinine for at the end of 72 hours they included uh, septic patient who was uh, adult more than 18 and above with a serum lactate of uh, more than 2 millimoles per liter uh, and acute kidney injury with the serum lactate uh, serum creatinine level of uh, more than 1 mg per deciliter the exclusion criteria they include was the clinical need of patient uh, time in for the patient who was already need for the patient who uh, alcoholic or the patient who uh, have a time in deficiency on the replacement or vitamin supplements and also the pa- rule out the patient with the already patient on renal replacement therapy pregnant patient and the non allergic to the time in is a quadruple blinded study Uh, participant investigators clinical teams and assessor are blinded so thiamine is a odorless colorless so is easy to blind uh, thiamine uh, methods uh, thiamine uh, 200 mg uh, in 50 ml normal saline every 12 hours for 3 days uh, from the environment this is the placebo placebo is very uh, only that ns alone and usually and they manage the uh, following the serving sepsis guidelines for the sepsis management while uh, the measurement they are measuring the serum thiamine and creatinine values at the pre enrollment and at the end of 24 48 and 72 hours the primary outcome they are uh, uh, in measuring are uh, serum creatinine level uh, difference between 0 and 72 hours and the secondary uh, outcomes they are measuring the need of uh, renal replacement therapy icu free days in hospital mortality and the markers of kidney injuries cystatin c angal and kim 1 the statistical analysis they used was categorical variables are measured by percentage and frequency continuous variables are measured by median mean median and standard deviation and outcomes are measured in log- logistic regressions this is the basic characteristics uh, of the patients Uh, it shows uh, uh, to overall 88 patients are enrolled uh, is divided into thiamine group for 42 and placebo consists of uh, 46 patients the median age uh, around the patients are uh, around 70 years and male patients are constituted of 45% in the uh, characteristics i want to mention that past medical history they included ckd patients also Uh, but not on the end stage disease uh, requiring the renal replacement therapy in the source of sepsis they most of the patients uh, septic patients they included are primarily from urinary tract infection and second one is the intra abdominal infection and the other is a pneumonia the primary outcome the primary outcome out, uh, out of 88 patient 57 patients developed uh, kidney failure by kate go method uh, during the icu stay uh the primary outcome is uh, statistically insignificant between the intervention group and the placebo groups there is no difference between the serum creatinine uh, rise in level from 0 to 72 hours the secondary outcomes uh, there is no clinical uh, difference between uh, primary and uh, intervention and placebo groups in the in hospital mortality need of renal replacement therapy and lactate levels also the only difference in the secondary outcome is the icu free days uh, shows a significant difference between the thiamine and placebo groups 
in the subgroup analysis, uh, the author mentioned that time and deficient patient who received time and has less uh, kidney stage failure uh, when compared to the uh, placebo group, although it's a uh, uh, statistically insignificant. The biomarker analysis, uh, secondary outcomes, they mentioned uh, that uh, pay, uh, only biomarker statistically significant decreases was NGAL. And the adverse events occurs in this uh, study, sir, nil. Discussion, uh, in this randomized control trial, uh, time in uh, versus placebo for attenuation of septic kidney injury, there is no clinical sig uh, significant difference between the control and the uh, interventional group at the end of 72 hours. In the secondary outcomes, only the uh, ICU free days shows a significant clinical difference. So no difference in the uh, receipt of uh, renal replacement therapy and the mortality, ICU mortality. Other in discussion, they mentioning uh, one uh, trial published in Critical Care Medicine, Ulam et al. published uh, author. It's a study about effect of time in administration and lactate clearance and the mortality in the septic patients. It is a retrospective single center cohort study in done in US. They uh, used 500 mg of thymine versus uh, placebo groups. They are giving eight hours for continuous uh, for a 72 hour for three days. This was uh, the primary outcome of this study was uh, uh, lactate clearance and the secondary outcome in uh, in nose mortality and the renal replacement and uh, mechanical ventilation free days. The primary outcome, uh, the conclusion they saw uh, was uh, time in administration, uh, which was started within 24 hours in septic patients, shows improved lactate clearance and the reduction in the 28-day mortality when compared to the placebo groups. The other studies uh, mentioned in the discussion was uh, published in Critical Care Medicine 2016 by Donio et al. It is a randomized double-blind placebo control study uh, of timing in a septic shock patient. Uh, it's a double-blind placebo control study uh, done in two US hospitals uh, in the septic shock patient uh, with the lactate, elevated lactate levels of more than 3 millimoles. It was done around 2010 to 14. They used time in 200 milligram twice daily for seven days. In this patient, 88 patients was enrolled. Uh, the primary outcome they measured was lactate levels at the 24 hours. And the secondary outcomes, uh, the reversal of uh, septic shock and the reversal of uh, uh, severity of illness and the change in the in-nose mortality. Uh, the, uh, the outcome shows no significant difference between the intervention and placebo groups. But they found that uh, if the time and deficient patient in the septic group shows uh, significant lower and uh, lower of lactate levels at the 24 hours and the possible decrease in the mortality over the time. Uh, the other studies they mentioned about uh, uh, multiple recent uh, randomized trials about the combination of time in ascorbic acid and corticosteroid in the septic shock patients. In the Victus and uh, randomized trial published in JAMA in 2021 uh, it was done in the 43 hospitals uh, in US, so multicentric randomized trial, double blind study. study. Uh, they took 500 patients out of 250 in each group. They used one, uh, 1.5 gram of vitamin C, uh, 100 mil, uh, milligram of uh, vitamin B1, and hydrocortisone of uh, 50 milligram uh, for every six hours for, 70, uh, for 96 hours for uh, three, four days. The primary outcome shows uh, no significant uh, difference in the ventilator and vasopressor free, free days and also no improvement in the 30 days mortality. And another trial, the vitamin randomized uh, clinical trial published in JAMA in 2020. It's a multicentric and multinational trial uh, done in Australia, New Zealand and Brazil. So uh, randomized control trial, they included uh, uh, 2000... Uh, 216 patients, the, the drugs they used, the, calm, the dose they used was 1.5 gram of uh, vitamin C, hydrocortisone 50 milligram, and vitamin B of uh, 200 milligram, uh, six hours, 
they used. They are also showing that uh, no significant benefit uh, because of this uh, drugs. Uh, but uh, the low bid trials uh, done in uh, published in Canadian Critical Care, uh, it includes uh, uh, 872 patient, uh, 435 pa patient in the interventional group and 437 in the placebo group. Uh, they measure the uh, uh, mortality, inverse mortality. Primary outcome is the inverse mortality. They source uh, the interventional groups have high mortality rate uh, than the placebo groups. The limitation author the mentioned was a small size sample uh, and the underpower to reject the null uh, false null hypothesis and the dose of thiamine in the septic population is not optimized so far. And the measurement, time and time in, uh, serum time in measurement uh, test. Uh, they want to check that serum time in is indirect, uh, may not re reflect the total body time in stores. Conclusions uh, in the TUPS trial was no statistic difference in the serum creatine level over 72 hours in the septic patients who received time in versus placebo. And no statistical di uh, difference in the uh, patient uh, in the groups, uh, the receipt of renal replacement therapy and the mortality. The only benefit they achieved was the more alive or ICU free days. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. You have made a very nice presentation of the trial. And now it's time to dissect this trial. So I want to start by asking moderator to today, Dr. Subbaradi. Subbaradi, if you look into this trial, the first things first, there will be a lot of questions, I'm sure, and a lot of concerns. The first concern, of course, which has been- Ramesh, you can stop sharing the screen. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. First question, which, of course, the authors themselves express, and we also we can take a step farther from this, is that this- Randomized control trial is on a, on a sample of 86 patients, 42 received the intervention, 46 received the placebo. And if you see, there were actually thiamine deficient patients on the subset with analyzed only 23, which got divided between the two groups. Now, do you think this, this is a too small a number on which we can actually define the parameters based upon which thiamine deficiency or sufficiency can be taken as a marker of disease? In septic shock. Yes, Dr. Subbaradi. Good evening, all. Thank you uh, for including me. And uh, thanks, uh, uh, Pradeep, sir, for uh, giving us a very good paper. And uh, thymine is a very favorite molecule for the intensive care uh, physicians. And uh, uh, the evidence is changing about vitamin C and then evidence is changing about the thymine. But when, uh, if you look at this particular study, uh, this is this study, as you rightly said, it is a very well conducted study. It's a randomized control trial, and uh, but the only thing is a number. The number is very small, and then if you look at both groups, is around forty-five for around eighty patients they divided, and with this number again the thymine deficient num uh, people are very low, and then how they are measuring the thymine. Uh, and timing, uh, if you measure the plasma levels and then- Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we will come to that. We will come to yeah. that. So that is one thing. And with this, I think uh, uh, saying that yes. in uh, timing that? deficient people, and we have seen the decrease in NGAL, and then there is decrease in ICU yeah. free so, may not be uh, like, uh, may, may not be very uh, correct, yeah. this uh, small number. That's fine. That's fine, Dr. Subbaradi. I just want to think that is if you ex believe that 23 is, is a small number. and But however, if you also see that they have calculated the sample size on the basis of a pilot study, which they have given, and which has used thiamine in the same dose of 200 uh, mg for three days. Pradeep, what would have been a proper way of yielding a sample size that would have actually benefited this study? Because the entire crux of this issue is that there were only 23 patients in whom the, the thiamine was actually deficient. So we are yeah. coming to a conclusion about 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 a, about the benefit of a drug. Who's yeah, Dr. Pradeep. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Anirban. So, a doubt set. I wish to congratulate Ramesh for making that excellent presentation. And again, I appreciate someone dwelling into other studies uh, also in detail, uh, which which creates sort of a context to this study. Uh, so, as Ramesh mentioned, Anirban, if you see, there are again, like last time we discussed a paper, even in this paper, if you see, 
there are at least 10 studies uh, comparing uh, you know vitamin c with the thiamine uh, so that combination but if you look at isolated thiamine and uh, the trials for the studies are very few and uh, so when you have very few studies here there is a mention in the manuscript about sample size calculation where they have looked into the previous studies and they have looked at estimated median difference of 0 0.51 at 72 hours with variance and covariance as a, a sort of an indicator that they have taken to calculate the sample size which means the due diligence has been done to arrive at that number uh, but having said that the whole fallacy of this study is the intervention benefited only seven patients on Irma. only seven why i say because time deficient were only seven so in 88 patients so your intervention where you could have possibly seen the effect is only seven patients out of 88, which were time deficient. So I think that is where it falls apart is what yeah, my submission is. I agree with you. I agree with you, Pradeep. Jay Prakash, I just want to ask you in brief, in two lines, could, can there be a better sample size calculation method than what the authors have used for this study, which would have yielded something a value in which we, we could have escaped this of finding of 23 deficient patients only. See, they, they calculated sample size by their own pilot study. If you look at the previous data, suppose that uh, in that article that both published in JAMA, vitamin C trial. So on that ground, they formulate a research question. If you will increase the gap, that means confidence interval, then sample size will increase. This is a tricky thing. If, uh, if you will see the uh, uh, result, you will find out the median and interquartile range were given in both weather. Uh, and on that ground, they found that there will be more ICU free days. If you will interpret in other way, you will feel there is no a statistical si a significant difference. So this anyway, is a tricky, a tricky thing. ICU free days. We are just, uh, you can tell about any other more suitable method of sample size calculation in pertinent to this case. If See, any. Yeah, definitely, sir. Uh, but uh, it should be based on your assumption. And assumption, definitely, it will come through the previous literature. Absolutely. Yeah. What Absolutely. he did, he did. No, uh, Anil, Anil, but the question you're asking is whether the estimated sense. median difference of 0.51, is that good enough? Is that the something that you want to do? Exactly. exactly. Because that, that's determining the effect size here. Yeah. See. Yeah. yeah. If, if you will see the effect size, sir, if you want, you may increase that. But uh, that this is a very tricky thing. I can't discuss here. So... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult, but what they have done is reasonably good enough. That's what I can. Yeah, yeah definitely. That I can take from it's all of you. Brother, uh, uh, Ajit, interpretation. Yeah, Ajit, I go to you. Do you think that this decrease in creatinine as a primary outcome is 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 probably something something which can get which can distort it for the simple reason that every center was separately measuring the creatinine. And whereas the whereas the biomarkers were all measured in the referral center, which was a single center, the collecting center, do you think that some kind of a, a different primary outcome would have yielded a different result? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the creatinine, the, the creatinine measurement, obviously, the creatinine depends on various various multiple other factors. You know, in the same patients. So, so you mean to say that it is it is measured in different laboratories? You mean to say it could have of if course, that's one. That's one. Either measuring creatinine at the same place for all centers, or choosing something else. Uh, 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 maybe some kind of biomarker only, or by maybe choosing a, a, a more patient outcome like renal failure only, KDGO stage three, which they have chosen as the secondary outcome. Something of that kind. Yeah, probably yes. Subba Reddy, Doctor Subba Reddy, uh, any. Any different primary outcome would have in, would have influenced the results in a different direction. What do you think? Uh, I didn't get your question. Any any different? The, here, the outcome, the primary outcome was the change in the creatinine from the base level because they measured at baseline 24, 48, and 72 hours, and from yeah. then that, that that that's what they did. Now, yeah. if they had not taken creatinine as the primary outcome, they would have taken, if they had taken KDGO stage 3 AKI, the need for RRT or anything of such kind as a primary outcome, could the results have been different? 
Yes, maybe. But uh, other than creatinine, I think they have done in a good hospitals and then the creatinine, uh, when they were measuring creatinine, there may not be much change in that. But I think definitely the biomarkers will be, are given, they will be like, a, uh, you will get a better uh, uh, better standardization when you're, when you're looking at the biomarkers. But when you, when you look at the renal replacement therapy and then the kiligos stays the instead of uh, like, a, instead of creatinine and biomarkers that would have yielded uh, in a better uh, better result jp jp i want to ask you that in such cases in such cases where it is difficult to get a sample size if you try to use kdgo3 as a primary outcome or rrt as a primary outcome and you give something different how about using a composite outcome as a composite primary outcome do you think that it would have yielded a more interesting results or more something which we can rely upon yes sir see just i was asking you about that uh, how they formulate their research question and what was the idea behind that the important thing is that see if you are starting any trial the first important thing there must be a hypothesis and on that ground you want to pr prove that whether this uh, molecule will affect uh, your result or not. So the idea behind that is, I mean, it will, uh, because most of the renal dysfunction will be due to renal uh, hypoperfusion and mitochondrial injury. So that was the idea behind that. And now coming to the what question you asked, see, uh, <clears throat> you can formulate in different way this question. Because uh, they have uh, taken one primary outcome and four uh, secondary outcome. The important thing what they see no any trial what I read yet is going to affect the mortality. There will be no any mortality benefit. Vitamin C, all those. Uh, and yeah, and the, it's one, it's one thing. I, we are not talking about mortality here at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So creatinine because uh, reason behind that they want to see that whether uh, uh, after giving thiamine uh, creat level will increase or decrease that is their hypothesis and uh, if you if you would like to just increase the sample size you have to add your assumption and on that basis you you may increase your sample size so, so Pradeep, I just want to ask you that as whatever JP said from taking here. So, is it very likely that is it very likely that the authors have failed to reject a false null hypothesis, and that is a shortcoming of this study? Yeah, I think Ramesh already mentioned Anirban. Authors have acknowledged that. If your yeah. description, Ramesh can allude to that. Yes, and yes. they do say that type 2 error uh, was a uh, limitation uh, because and it was inadequately yes, powered for that. And uh, yes, there was failure of rejection of null hypothesis and type hypothesis. 2 error prevailed. They do mention. So author, because it was not powered for all the endpoints that they looked, only the primary endpoint was sort of a powered uh, for this study, in this particular study. And I think JP rightly uh, mentioned and pointed out, which is terribly important in this study, the whole hypothesis was physiological hypothesis, JP, because there is no scientific, uh, good, robust study uh, pre-existing where they precisely looked at thiamine saving the kidneys. Ramesh, correct me if I'm wrong, because the previous kidneys tended to look more at lactate clearance and uh, some observational study showed uh, mortality benefit. But here they hypothesize saying there is a lot of mitochondria that is present in the kidney and these mitochondria have lost their energy. So you give thiamine and they get energized and that and it prevents apoptosis. So that is the sort of physiological hypothesis they tried to look into clinical context was my understanding. So Ramesh, you have read through this. I'm, I'm sure other panelists can correct me. Uh, because the whole yes, hypothesis yes, itself was fallacious is what I felt. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. Prad what, what Pradeep has just now tell, if I take on to that uh, Dr. Subaraddi, if you compare the other biomarkers, be it cyst uh, cystanine other than NGAL, be it KIM-1, all of this, there was a definite, there was a difference in the patients who received thiamine versus the placebo group. Now, why was this change apparent in those patients, whereas the change in creatinine was not apparent at all? 
Besides, of course, that they were not powered, but still, then in percentage wise, there was difference. And if you look at all the biomarkers, I think there was a difference only with this NGAL. The other biomarkers were there was not much change. So the NGAL, there is a, a significant detection. In, interestingly, uh, Subbaridi, if you look at the Kim, kidney injury marker, uh, mean, the thiamine. Thiamine and placebo levels were same point eight, but the confidence interval. I think this is for trainees. If you are seeing that chart, it is point eight and point eight. The levels in thiamine and placebo kidney injury marker, but it attains statistical because of the confidence interval. Uh, JP, you can allude that later. Super ready over to you. Yeah, that was yeah. statistically significant. Super ready. Yeah. Team one. Yes. So uh, they found uh, like uh, there is difference with NGAL, but not with other biomarkers. And uh, uh, I think uh, creatinine, uh, creatinine, if you see, and uh, there is uh, creatinine was less definitely in the thiamine group when compared to the placebo group, but it is not statistically significant, but uh, in the thiamine group, it was less. Yeah, so it's fine that it's not statistically significant because it was not powered enough to de detect the statistical difference. JB, I want to ask you one more important thing in this pursuance. That when they measured the, the, this thiamine, that which, which subordinate does at all the blood level or the serum level of the thiamine depict the stores of the body, or can, they, can there be much difference between the two? I will go on, Pajit, after this with the same question. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get you, sir. Thiamine stores of the body do they correlate with the blood or serum level? Uh, for what kidney serum creatinine? the measurement of thiamine in okay. the blood, does it correlate with the body stores of thiamine? Or their can, body can show much variation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking about exactly the same thing because you see, I don't, I didn't went through that uh, uh, article, whole article. Only what uh, Dr. Ramesh presented, I saw only those things in between. So, <clears throat> On which scale, at what le level, they started their uh, therapy? Because when they started, at what days, you must have to know whether patient land up in acute kidney uh, dysfunction at that time or not, and uh, what was their protocol. You must have having idea about those. So I can't say exactly. Ajit, yeah. can, can I can I answer that? Uh, yeah, I think Ramesh also yeah, can correct me. Yeah, the uh, thiamine uh, levels was taken as less than eight. Uh, nanomoles per liter as the reference but creatinine more than one were inclusion criteria uh, Ramesh you can talk on this because yes, uh, they, they took the criteria as possible infection or on vasopressors with creatinine more than one so it's not like a established acute kidney injury at the outset uh, JP. so they did uh, later on evolve into developing AKI so there are some limitations with regards to inclusion criteria because I don't know if they all fulfilled the core definition of peptic shock. They took lactate level more than two. Then they took someone on vasopressors and creatinine more than one. Uh, Ramesh, you have comments on this? Yes, sir. They taken the serum creatinine more than one for the intervention of drugs. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah. So, and and we been asking, see, basically the timing levels, as you rightly said, you know, it may not be reflecting the the body stores of thiamine. So the, this may or may or may not be reflected. Nobody is very clear about the literature. The available medical literature is very unclear about that. And then there will be, a, you know, to measure, you know, other parameters like, you know, some active form of thiamine, like thiamine, thyrophosphate and all. The others are already acknowledged that is the limitation of the study. So besides acknowledging the limitations of the study and besides acknowledging that, also that the dose of the thiamine is not the exact dose as we don't know what's the right. Do you think that uh, Pradeep, in this case, in the, the study would have been better solved if they would have adopted a different dosage than the one they used? I don't think so, Anirban, because the authors do acknowledge no one knows for sure what is the right dose that is needed to replenish the timing stores. Here they've used 200 mg twice a daily. So 400 mg per day they've used for three days. Uh, these are all similar doses uh, where the maric uh, sort of uh, a vitamin C frenzy uh, had I taken get place. Your get your so point. it is very similar. Uh, so it is a desperate attempt, I feel, because uh, I think as Ramesh said, there is one author who has done more studies. Like every time we do this journal club, we see 
the whole studies are sort of stimulated by one author's uh, sort of a zeal to prove something. Here, I think the Moscovitz has done some three, four studies in US where he has done in thiamine and proven this lactate clearance, so on and so forth, mortality. I think that is where it stems from. So there is a desperate attempt to again go on to show that if thiamine really helps. But the, all the Merrick trial and vitamin C, the use of thiamine was for different reason. It was to prevent AKI because of oxalate crystal formation when high dose vitamin C is used. So that was not the case. So, so. But but, but uh, Dr. Subbar Reddy, climbing back to you, if you see that the same question that if there were only 23 pa 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 patients who were deficient in thiamine and rest all. So don't no, only seven. Anirban, yeah. uh, I think the... Uh, because placebo was 16 they gave uh, they gave time in only in seven patients yeah so only in seven but uh, overall 23 so don't you think that this 200 milligram dose would have been unnecessary for a vast majority of the patients for no reason and if this no portion this if this point has been had been noted at, at the planning stage it would have been justified to use lesser dose of time in dr subbaradi Generally, we use around 300 milligrams of thymine for patients. And then in this in this study also, they've taken around 400 milligrams of thymine. So, but in the previous study, when they used high-dose thymine, they found there is a definitely decrease in the mortality, 28-day mortality, and then the lactate clearance. But we I, actually, we don't know what is the right uh, dose, but definitely uh, we all use thymine for the thymine deficient population. And then, and then in other studies also, they found uh, like benefit when they used but uh, other patients, I don't think uh, it is a waste giving uh, giving time in waste in other people because we don't know the dose. Maybe if the different dose when you do the trial and then we may found benefit because the physiolo physiological hypothesis is very strong, but we need to prove in a bigger study with a bigger number and then in a good study. But I don't think uh, it is uh, it is not required in other population, It uh, uh, but there is no evidence as of now. It, we so, may prove so it. Absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence, so it's that's fine. Quite, I go to J yeah, JP. I won't have a different question from you. I have solved this question. So, what no one more thing that is very uh interesting thing I would like to add in that one. Uh, just two years back, one a study published on same hypothesis that single dose of thiamine on oxygen consumption in patient requiring mechanical ventilation. So, single dose they have given and they wanted to look at that whether. Uh, result will affect will or not but it was also a negative study there was uh, no uh, jp just to make a comment oxygen consumption was measured in this study also isn't it ramesh uh, they did measure yes, oxygen sir. consumption yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. using xf for some uh, some cell stress something they used okay. but it shows no difference yeah, there was no actually. difference yeah, yeah so no. jp it was used in this also so it is a robust trial sort of a thing uh. Anirban, can you yeah, yeah, involve Dr. Murli, sir? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because he has done yeah. PhD in uh, kidney Doctor, injury. Dr. Kaji, uh, welcome, welcome, Dr. Kaji. I just wanted to ask you that in such cases when we have a much wider variation of dose and we know that this, such as this, this drug doesn't have a side effect, could a much higher dose would have been better or uh, some kind of propensity matched uh, dose could have been calculated to ensure that the deficient population got an adequate dose of thiamine while the sufficient population had a lesser dose. Dr. Kanchi. Uh, thank you. Thank you for involving me in the discussion. Uh, it's a great uh, way you are conducting this program. Uh, because uh, you did mention that uh, thiamine is relatively harmless, I am sure, uh, sure you can try a higher dose and see if there is any difference. Uh, that would be my take on this question. Dr. Shrikant, I know that with the whole yeah, study... You can that question, uh, Murli, sir, because yeah. I know you have done uh, PhD in uh, biomarkers <laughs> in kidney, Murli, sir. Yes, yes. So yes. this study has looked into three biomarkers, I mean, three uh, major biomarkers, NGAL, cystatin, and kidney injury marker. And all these uh, biomarkers signal to us, as Subbaradi previously mentioned, NGAL attained statistical significance in uh, reduced uh, reduced NGAL levels where thiamine was used, and kidney injury marker also was reduced, uh, Murli sir. So, do we believe there is some sort of a metabolic uh, resuscitation, or because that's the word they use when you're uh, when you're targeting mitochondrial function? So, do uh, we still believe yeah. that at the cellular level this seems to have some impact, uh, Murli sir? My, my opinion is that uh, these biomarkers. 
have not really proven to be of benefit to any of them, NGL or cystatin C or chemo, because there are several confounding factors. For example, NGL may be secreted from the leukocytes. In patients who have sepsis, when there's leukocytosis, whether NGL, which is present in the blood or the urine, is reflective of kidney injury, we are not sure. It could be from the secreted from the leukocytes. Similarly, the nephrocheck also has not uh, been consistently shown to be of uh, uh, the benefit in terms of uh, determining the presence or absence of kidney injury. So unless we have a, a marker which is uh, time-tested, as far as uh, the uh, present condition is concerned, only creatinine, but creatinine has several drawbacks. It uh, takes for, uh, 24 to 48 hours for it to go up. And it's also influenced by the protein intake and the body mass in ter terms of muscle mass and the state of hydration, etc. So um, these biomarkers, we have to wait and see which one uh, runs the race to be able to be the the best one in terms of predicting or pro prognostic kidney injury. Yeah. Thank you. I, I just want to ask Dr. Shrikant Shastrabuddhi because he's also there. as well. welcome you, Shrikant, in Jix Rapid Journal Review. I, I just want to ask you, I, I want to ask you a simple question that when Pradeep mentioned about the oxygen consumption, can you, can you hear me, Shrikant? I can't see him on the panel. Is he there? Achha, achha. I saw his name uh, there somewhere, so I thought that he might be there. He no, might... no, no. I, 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 I want to, Ajit, I'm coming to you only with that question, that if you see the measurement of the oxygen metabolism, if you think that requires an instrument where it should be done at a very enormous pace, and when a study is conducted in multiple centers and each of them may not be equipped well enough to conduct that in a, such a short span of time, can it add more fallacies than real value, Ajit? Yeah, there is there is a possibility there because you know different different centers you know there could have been some difference in the, the measurements and all that can they can have they can have some variation for sure. But you know the, the overall study the overall study you know what I'm you see is the conducted not to find out you know is there a response in uh, you know time in sufficient versus time in depleted individuals. See. So the so this is this is this is a here in this study the thiamine is given under the high physiological hypothesis of promoting oxidative metabolism, you know through because of the thiamine is a, a promoter of you know the, the you know the the, the pyruvate dehydrated enzyme which is you know the gatekeeper of the TCA cycle so aerobic aerobic metabolism is going to be promoted. So here means you know so I don't know whether there is a real point you know about the thiamine depleted and thiamine thiamine sufficient. Indigenous matter difference really matters here. It's just like, you know, you're preventing the kidney, kidney injury, kidney is having a lot of mitochondria. So where, you know, you try to promote the so-called oxidative metabolism by the, you know, by, by giving time in, by, you know, by stimulating this, you know, uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase. So that, that is what, what is really meant, meant here. I get your point, Ajit. Dr. Superdetti, yeah. so oh, at the end, do you think that this is a desperate aim trying to prove that we need an adjuvant therapy Anyway, in sepsis, and it's it's a desperate search to find an adjuvant when all the adjuvants are almost failing. Yes, Dr. Subbarid. Yes, yes uh, after that, uh, metabolic resuscitation and uh, palmuric et al. And um, uh, we we were uh, we were using hat hydrocortisone uh, and then ascorbic acid and then the thymine. And then we are trying to find the desperate molecule, the micronutrient, which can help a septic shock patient whatever mechanism it is to reduce the oxidative stress or to promote aerobic metabolism. There are a lot of other trials where we did not find any benefit. Victos is one trial. They did not find any benefit. And then the vitamin study, which they have done in the New Zealand and Australia, around 10 intensive care units, again, they did not find any benefit. But the hydrocortisone is helpful for a patient who is in septic shock. The others, still, there is no great evidence, whether it is thymine or vitamin C, there's no great evidence. But uh, in future, we may get, we may find a magic molecule, but as of now, there is nothing. So in the, in concerning this study, before I end this show, I will take concluding remarks from each of our panelists. I start with you, Pradeep, at the end of the day, after reading this article, yeah. your concluding remarks. Yes, yeah, so Anirban, to submit, I think it's a 
reasonably well conducted study a lot of effort has been put in in measuring a lot of variables uh, and i think they have put in good scientific principles in doing this study but as i said the hypothesis seems to be a little fallacious because it was a physiological hypothesis trying to translate into clinical outcome that is where uh, we know that it would fail uh, but if I see the numbers between the thiamine and placebo groups, uh, the numbers look quite staggering uh, because uh, there are strong signals favoring thiamine and more so with biomarkers uh, because if you if are to believe that biomarkers are a good indicator of kidney injury and uh, and of, of course this is in subgroup analysis, so it shows there is some effect at a mitochondrial level, at a physiological level and when will it translate into clinical outcome? Are we giving the right dose? Is it uh, maybe 400 mg is still the is lesser the dose, the but definitely larger trials are in the offing. I would say good uh, big studies possibly may conclusively put a nail to the coffin on uh, time. Until then, we need to await for more trials. Concluding remarks, Dr. Jay Prakash, you are there, or else I will move on to Dr. Murli. Dr. Murli, Dr. Murli, sir. Concluding remarks. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, it was a well-conducted study. And uh, as you initially pointed out, whether the sample size is adequate is a question which we need to consider. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a well-done uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Dr. Rajit, concluding remarks. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the major you know, limitation is basically just the, the size of the sample size is too small. That's a major limitation of this study. And obviously, it failed to prove anything, you know, uh, any positive outcome. So at this point, I'm obviously it is not going to change my practice. I will continue my current practice. And obviously, I don't use, you know, time in to prevent an acute kidney injury in septic shock patients. J Jay Prakash, you are there? No. Super ready. Dr. Super ready. I will be fine. Besides my, my, the concluding my, my remarks, yeah. I, I want to add you one more question that if you have to reformulate or redesign a similar study, which one or two things you definitely eliminate from this prototype or from this kind of study or which one or thing you will definitely add if you have to design or formulate a new study on the similar lines. Yeah, Subbaradi, but plus your concluding remarks. Yeah, my take on this study is thymine is a useful molecule. We cannot discard this and definitely it is useful in, a, in patients with thymine deficiency when you are dealing with venicase encephalopathy or when you are dealing with, uh, when you are trying uh, in a refeeding syndrome when you are using uh, these, uh, like there is thym there's a role for thymine in, uh, in, in centric, intensive care uh, patients. But in septic shock, at this point of time, there's no evidence. So we don't use uh, a, in all the patients, uh, whether to prevent acute kidney injury or for the lactate clearance, presently there, there is no role. But if I have to redesign this study, yes, uh, like uh, as uh, Kanchi sir said, uh, there are uh, like, instead of going for these different uh, uh, biomarkers, we can use NephroCheck, which is uh, more reliable now. NephroCheck can be included in the study. And when you look at the more uh, look at the composite uh, endpoints than uh, looking at uh, the particular the creatinine or uh, anything, com we can look at that. Thank you, Pradeep. You wanted to add anything? Yeah, no, I think Subaradi has already answered. Uh, I think with that excellent point, which I said, yes. which Anirban also said, would that because all cardiology trials, Anirban, if you look, and a JP will allude, maybe JP will have a comment. They look at composite endpoint. Gone are the days we should look only at mortality. One single marker will always uh, yield such uh, sort of a negative trials. It is about time that uh, intensive care trials start looking at the composite endpoint because here I see, we, we never discussed Anirban about ICU free days, which is also a significant endpoint, which was uh, which was significantly better in time. In and somehow in the whole discussion we failed to appreciate that there was that benefit of reducing and it was staggering number if you see 22.5 versus zero icu free day so which is a big sort of a difference uh, so i would say there is still something that we need to uh, sort of investigate in this and composite endpoint for all the trainees i think that's a good message yeah i'm i'm i, I we wish i'm sure i i'm i am I acknowledge that we have missed out on the icu free days and actually the the, 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 the this point of icu free days was quite torrentious because they did not give proper reasons that why and it was not something they expected so they found it by it was a chance finding and those icu free days 
did not influence the incidence of RRT, nor the AK Kedigo stage 3 AKI, nor other interventions which can be related that the patient was actually well dis uh, despite not being in the ICU. So uh, that's a very important point, of course, but still they had ICU free days and so there was definite reduction in cost. So JP, Jay Prakash, your final concluding remarks on the basis of this study. See, sir, we should continue what we are practicing. We should on that deal because this is, on this ground, we can't change your practice. One more thing, as we know that most of the part, uh, we are using thiamine for the especially in liver patient, uh, liver decomposition, liver liver failure. So we should continue and I, I need all. But one more thing is that, <clears throat> see, if there is no harm benefit, you just see your clinical experience that uh, on that ground, you can't rely on everyone what result finding, whatever uh, you are getting from uh, this uh, literature with a small sample size. If you want to see, you may start. Friends, we had a very, we know that metabolic resuscitation and, is something. And Ramesh, Ramesh can have final comments on it, but he's an excellent presentation, Ramesh. Uh, then we can close. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, as you said, the author uh, tried to convince Thiamin uh, in the septic kidney injuries. He did so much uh, uh, study based on Thiamin on septic patients. And for evaluation, uh, I think uh, the 72 hours we can extend to uh, further four or five days. And one more thing, instead of measuring serum care, creatine also, how the patient recovering from the uh, renal replacement therapy in the, both the groups, how far it comes can be also measured, I think. Yeah, thank you. So metabolic resuscitation is something of Im immense importance nowadays. And if we see this metabolic resuscitation, then we definitely cannot ignore the role of thiamine as a very potent metabolic resuscitator by, by acting upon the enzymes as a, as a cofactor because it's a cofactor and its deficiency has been linked with a failing aerobic metabolism. But given the fact that we are still yet to gather sufficient evidences in terms of outcome, Probably we need to devise such studies with more measurable, meaningfully compiled composite outcome studies on a larger group of patients and match their propensity for a, for a little longer time with, a, with some objective measurements which can be valid across all settings to give a clear verdict on this. We will be back again on the second Friday of next month with some more interesting studies. So thanks to all the panelists. Until we meet again from all of us of Jake's Rapid Journal Review, Shubhratri, Shabar Hayat, good night. Thank you. Thank you, Anirban. Thank you, Subhadi. Thank, Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you, JP. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.